Thanks so much for joining us. I'm so thrilled to have at the table James Sinsick. Did I get that yeah, right? Correct. Right. And yep. Geraldine Valentine. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. You set out to take a lot of portraits of folks in Bridgeport. Where did this start? And we're going to talk about the Bridgeport Portrait Project. Where did the idea come from? The idea really came to us a long time ago when we first opened up our commercial photo business in, in Bridgeport. And that was in 1986. But in 1989, we started a, a project in Bridgeport photographing people on Bridgeport's Main Street. We were looking for people of different occupations, and we photographed a butcher, a, a barber. A baker, a candlestick maker. We, we missed the exactly. baker, but yeah. To, to yeah. tell their yeah. stories, right? Exactly. Yeah. You were born in Bridgeport. Yes. Yeah. Why is it important to tell Bridgeport's story oh. through people? The people are just the strength of the city. You wouldn't have a city without the people, and it's just an amazing array of different cultures, ethnic backgrounds. And everybody's got a story, right? Totally. Everybody has a story, and everybody in whatever place you pick to knock on a door has a, has a story. It could, it could have been New Haven, it could have been uh, you know, smaller towns, but uh, a city like Bridgeport just And everybody's fascinating. More. Everybody's fascinating. Oh, yeah. Because totally. they have a history, yeah. right? But uh -huh. even people yeah. who think they don't have a story, they have such a story. <laughs> exactly. Our yeah. best stories. If you spend five yeah. minutes with somebody, you're like, okay, tell yeah. me about this, tell me about that. Yeah. You got some state money for the Bridgeport Bridgeport Portrait Project. When did you start that? We, we started the project in 2014. Okay. We took our first photo in 2014. And the mission was what? The mission was very simply just to try to photograph as many people in Bridgeport that we thought would tell Bridgeport's story. We, we used to say to define Bridgeport by way of the people. And is this going to live somewhere in an exhibit? Once you're done, because you're not places. done. Yeah. No, from, we're, not, we're far from done. <laughs> from, from the beginning, we planned on doing three different things. We planned on an exhibit. We planned on putting a book together with uh, edited stories in the, in the book pages. And we planned on uh, what we call a slide presentation, where we, we take multiple images of each person, and we've put some together in like a flip card style oh, little video. Neat. They're all still photos. So we're looking for ways to add a little bit of a, a motion to to the, the to the visuals. How many so, photos have you taken so far? We've close we've, to 150. 150. 100, 150 people. People. Okay. So we, but we do those multiple images of each sure. person. We spend we spend quite a bit of time. How many do you think you're going to take? Is there a limit? We thought we were going to take about 70. You know, look for 75 different people. But uh, when we got a little bit over 100, it seems like every time we photograph another person, we find another two or three that right, just help right. us. But that's how we've been tell finding a, tell people, a better story. so we're not complaining about that. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of uh, word of mouth. But, yeah. like I said but earlier, we're trying to get into some of the different cultural, the deeper sure. communities, some of the uh, places, neighborhoods, the neighborhoods yeah. that I think yeah. is probably difficult for us because if we don't speak their language, it's like you need to know somebody who knows somebody kind of a thing. Through churches or, or We've been what going through yeah. churches. Yeah. 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 Lately, we've, uh, we were just recently at a church that um, has been around for over 100, uh, over 100 years. years. And it originally started out as a Lithuanian church. And now the Lithuanians meet in a very, very small room, like a tiny little chapel in the basement. It's beautiful, but they can only house maybe 30 people. They really get 30 congregants. But the rest of the church is occupied now mostly with the Mexican population. So there's another population. Yes. All right, let's start looking at some of the photos that you have done. Um, so here, here's a, a broad retrospective of what's going on here. And you've just got going. And you've got some state money for this, too. We've we got state money. We applied for a state REGI grant, a regional initiative grant, sure. through the Connecticut Office of the Arts. And that grant started last October and we'll end the last day of this oh, September. So it's tell, a, tell them to give you more money so we <laughs> can keep doing this. All right, let's, let's look at some of these folks. All right, this is a theater somewhere. This is the Klein Memorial uh, Auditorium in, in Bridgeport. It's been around for a long time and uh, that's Lawrence is the executive director. Lawrence, Lawrence posed for our project because he lives in Bridgeport and also runs the, runs the Klein, but he let us use the stage of the Klein to photograph other people for quite a few different days. That Give me a couple sentences about his story. Lawrence used to be a producer for CBS TV. 
you know, he, and I'm not even sure if he retired from CBS, I, th I think so, mm -hmm. but he uh, came back and wanted to help out his community. And, Love that. Yeah. And he started out on the board. Yeah. Oh, He's okay. a board member and now as yeah. executive director. We have. Honestly, don't remember her. What's her show? <laughs> um, yeah, we photographed her about a year ago. Is she a little a over a year ago. No, she she's a, a student. She was a student. Yes. Okay. There's Softball player, and she did a few other sporting events as well. There's a uh, high school in Bridgewater called Warren Harding High School. Sure. And last year, 2018, was the last graduating class from the old Harding High School building. And they moved in in September of 2018 to a new, brand new building. I love but it. You've we, got the ball in the air. We, we wanted to <laughs> photograph part of the school, but also the students in the final graduating class, and she was one. And they allowed us to set up. We were there almost two weeks. They let oh us gosh. go in and out of the school. So you really yeah. get involved. Yes, we do. <laughs> Who is this gentleman? Sydney. I'll have to let Sydney talk, or okay. I'll have to let Geraldine talk about Sydney. Sydney and I have a... An emotional... <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we had met Sydney back in the... Uh, when we were on Main Street doing another project of ours, which evolved from our original Main Street photographs. And we had seen Sydney out in front of the Palace of Majestic Theaters. That we had been photographing inside, mo mostly We'll inside. talk about that at the okay. end of this, yeah. But he, um, but Sydney was we a, had met him on the street, uh, and he was also a client at the soup kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. It's the Thomas Merton House of Hospitality. So he, he's homeless or was homeless? He, he Actually, he became homeless when uh, there was a fire in the building where his, his apartment was, and he lost all of his belongings. But he was a client of the soup kitchen, and wow. the director of the soup kitchen saw a calendar that we produced with our Main Street portraits and asked us if we could do something, asked us if we would do something to help the, the Merton House at the time. And we sort of signed on to... We you're just helping just, Bridgeport all over the place. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I love what you're yeah. doing. May just said Sydney hadn't spoken in over two years to any of the social workers or any of the group she therapy. And then he spoke to you? He, not, not while we photographed <laughs> him, but we had a calendar opening where we allowed people uh, the public came in and we had a great turnout and we had the clients that were in the photographs in the calendar signing calendars and by the end of that evening Sydney walked us both to the door and he put his hand on our shoulders shook our hands and spoke and he was so grateful and then the, some of the people from the staff were like crying because it was Still just sort of so, gets <laughs> so moving See what but we help we help so many people it's just wonderful yeah all right let's look at, a, at another picture oh. who is this that's bill 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 we photographed as part of that main street portrait series and uh. bill used to shine shoes in the arcade in downtown bridgeport the arcade is it's a, a mall that runs from main street to broad street in, in bridgeport and into an inside type of a set up and the small photo there is bill's photo from 1991 Bill is still shining shoes inside the Uni People's United Bank building on, on Main Street in Bridgeport, and we photographed him last October, two days before his 100th birthday. Think lives, of lives the in Bridgeport. stories he has. Oh, he he yeah. does. Uh, oh my gosh. Bill, I, I, I would like to just add one thing about Bill. Bill, when we first met him, has a, a knack with, and I'm going to use Bill's language, but he has a knack with the ladies that walk by. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody that walks by is sugar this or yeah. sugar that. And, and he uh, gets away with it. <laughs> yeah, well, good for Bill. All right, we have another gal here. That's Major Lydia. Major Lydia runs the uh, Salvation Army office in Bridgeport. And uh, we haven't interviewed her yet, but she's got a, a you know pretty neat story. Of, what a smile. And awfully, awfully nice. She was very nice to, she uh, loves say, to work what she with. Does. Yeah. When you she take these people. pictures, what, what are you trying to capture? In your images. The, the essence of who they are, and a lot of it is in their eyes, although we've done a lot of uh, portraits with profiles, uh -huh. but still, I guess, Jay's usually behind the camera, well, always, I'm always working with the people we're photographing, and there's so much energy exchanged between the two of us, and it becomes fun, sometimes it gets emotional, but just by me being there, I guess people say I just evoke emotions from the person who's sitting. And it just happens, and so much is portrayed. It's just wonderful. It's very much like what, what we're doing now, except just I'm having almost having, almost always totally. have my finger on the button. Sometimes I don't have my finger on the button, and I miss something, but yeah. that happens. I that, know, yeah. I hate when that happens. <laughs> All right, let's continue on. That's Teddy. Yeah. Teddy is a client at the Maggie Daly Arts Center. It's a Kennedy Center-sponsored uh, mm -hmm. Did he make location. that? 
he and his friends at the, at the Maggie see. Daly made that, and uh, we were looking for different ways to photograph him. And, and again, we do a series of photos of each person, but uh. Teddy's known for riding his bike around Bridgeport, so we have photos of him with his bicycle and stuff. But uh, that was just a couple days before they were actually getting rid of, uh, I forget his name. Tom. Tom. Tom and we happened to show up because we were bringing the photograph. We to tried show to Teddy. Give our, the people were sitting for us a portrait of themselves. We gave Teddy the photograph, and they said, "Oh, you're here just in time. You can say goodbye to Tom." And we said, "What are you talking the about?" The objects that they made. They were getting rid of Tom. Yeah. We <laughs> took Tom home. <laughs> Your house. I we, told you we get very attached to our subjects. We could have brought Tom with us today, but no, uh, this is a profile. Yes, yeah. We and, uh, again some of the visuals that you know some sometimes we look for a visual just to break up the monotony of maybe a person looking at the camera, you know, time after time after sure, time. So we sure. started doing some profiles. And that, his occupation is? Do we know? His occupation? No, I would I would call him. He's a, a canvas. He just he poses as the canvas for his sister's artwork. His mm -hmm. sister is a body painter, uh -huh. and his story has a lot to do with how he reacts to his maybe naked body as opposed to being painted. It, it, changes, it changes him quite a bit. He was, he was in a car accident when he was very young and was very self-conscious, I guess, about body scars and things, but to, to, to listen to his story about his accident and to listen to how he feels changed when he's painted it's sort of heartwarming. But I'd like to add that that photograph that you see of him there on the right, that's the uh, very first. first day ever that he exposed his skin to a camera. Wow. Just with working with us. So it's just, it's so fabulous. I love this. Who is this that, gentleman? That's, that's Zygmunt. And uh, we've known him for a long time. He lives in, lives in Bridgeport, but he's a Polish Army World War II war veteran mm -hmm. and, and look uh, how decorated he is oh. very very much yeah. His, his, yeah. The, the, those medals were just weighing him down <laughs> and um, he stood for an, about an hour and ten minutes and when we got done I kept trying to ask him to sit please sit no no fine 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 and when we got done he said how long was I standing ten minutes he was terrific to work with, but uh, determination. He, we, we told him that he, he talked back to his time in the Polish Army, saying how he had to do things as he was told, and we, we had not a, not a problem that we, you know, but something we encountered time and time again. The metals would reflect our lights. Oh, sure. If he just budged, but he, right. didn't, he didn't budge. We found the spot, and he just, he was great. Did it ever yeah. occur to you to record them? I mean... The sittings? Yes. I mean, just on audio. You oh, know? just let it run while we're yes. doing the portraits. No, no we I th haven't. I think we might, you know, people might have mentioned it to us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you're so busy it, taking the portraits. Well, know? we're too busy. We would have, probably have to introduce somebody right. new to the group. See, I'm the, making more group. work for you. Well, no, you're <laughs> not, because let, no. Me, let me just give a little bit of an extension to the project. We have been interviewing these people, but not the same day we're doing the photography end of it. I so see. we do a different setup and we just run audio and we allow people to tell their story. Oh, so you are recording them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At, okay. a, at a different time, but yeah. yes, yes. We, okay. we are recording their stories, is the way we like to say it. Sort of so like that you can put it in the book? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have an editor because yeah. the, the stories are, I'm sure, are long. They um, are. This next gal. Maud. That's, that's Maud. Maybe you should just you know, explain um, she, Maud. Maud is from Haiti and uh, she does holistic health healings with Ayurvedic. She also has a radio station in a... Radio show. A radio show, I'm sorry, a radio show on Sunday mornings. And she talks about the natural health with a, a local naturopath. And where did she come to this country? A long time ago, do you know? We haven't interviewed her yet. Oh, see? <laughs> but her eyes are amazing. Yeah, so, so much, yes. That's Chris. Almost everybody in Bridgeport knows him as the sign guy, but Chris, I don't know if you've paid attention to local baseball, but Bridgeport had a, a baseball team for a while, for, for 20 years, called the Bridgeport Bluefish. And you can see Chris in the Bluefish uh, uniform on the lower side, but Chris and a friend of his, and then later his son, would bring fairly large signs, maybe 20 by 40 inch signs that Chris would make with different uh, yeah, almost like cartoon they bring them drugs. to the games? Bring yes. them to the game for people to sign. 
He's got hundreds. He's just the sign think. guy. He's got that. He's got the sign guy. <laughs> okay. Simple. Yeah. Everybody's got thousands and thousands but of Chris, signatures. You know, Chris is still around, but it's it's the part of our project that we think of as history already because right. the bluefish are gone. Right. So yeah. it's... Uh, well, know, I've our, been here a long time because we all remember them and yeah, they're gone. Yeah. All right, the next one. Glamour girl. We met, we, met Chris, we met Christine at a senior center in Bridgeboro yeah. where we went and spent maybe a day. Mm -hmm. uh, a Photographing. Second, second What's day. her background, do you know? She came from New York, but she lives right in Bridgeport, and she walks to the senior center. She's retired now. Yeah. But um, she came to Bridgeport to help her daughter out with her daughter's right. child, newborn child, her you know, Christine's grandchild. It was a simple story as why she came to Bridgeport, but uh, but she doesn't look like your typical woman in their 60s. She's loaded with Betty Boop tattoos. Oh, I can see that in the <laughs> picture. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The next uh, photo is a couple of gals. No. This gentleman. This that's, is that's Bill again. Oh, but this is the, the shoe shine guy. Yes. yes. Okay. From 1991. There's a couple of gals. This is Michelle and Karen. Sure. Michelle and Karen started the Black Rock Farmers Market, and Black Rock is a section of Bridgeport sure. on the west side. Five, five years ago. Yeah. That's and a great. They had their little rooster buddy over there. He was their mascot. Um, it's a chicken, right? It's a rooster. Oh, it's a rooster. Yeah. <laughs> I don't My know the heavens. Difference. <laughs> yes. But Buddy, Buddy, uh, Buddy was great for the camera. But Geraldine likes to talk about how she was helping cl clean the set, which was on the stage at the Klein Memorial Auditorium. Uh, and cleaning my clothes at the same time. But, <laughs> but it was so worth it. <laughs> this next gal is up against. Um, um, where is she? That's a, uh, I guess, a closed-up storefront on uh, Main Street in downtown Bridgeport, and. Uh, I guess it was maybe three, four years ago, the state gave some Bridgeport artists money to paint murals on oh, okay. some of the uh, And some that of the now has been covered that's, and closed down, so once yeah. again, that's historical. See, historical. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But Jody's an artist. This gentleman. Juan, Juan also was a client at the Merton House. The, uh, it's, it's much more than a soup kitchen, but uh, that's an easy way to describe it. where's he from? Did he grow up he in was, he was from he was from Puerto Rico. He lived in okay. he lived in Bridgeport at the time we photographed him. But he was part of a project that we worked on for the Merton House, so they could produce a calendar to use as a fundraising tool for the do you for the you guys ever sleep or are you just constantly <laughs> no. you have no time. I have a habit no, of getting up really very don't. early, but. <laughs> <laughs> Biddy, what's her name? Biddy. Biddy, oh, and she is Itty Biddy. Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth. Oh, uh, Biddy started working at Josephson Bag and Canvas as a bookkeeper. Oh my and gosh! She, back in the back travel. in the pre pre women's lib, if that's yes. still a, a used term, but oh. she ended up owning the business, you know, See, buying good the business. For her. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, exactly. But Biddy, we had asked Biddy, I think, four times to pose for that series of portraits, and three times she said no. She kept chasing him and out, the, the, and she got the yardstick. So and she what, was waving so it at him. So what happened that she said yes? We just she, broke her down. <laughs> I, think, like, I think she okay. she said she wanted to see how many times I would come back, and I think I think by <laughs> time she four, owns her own business. She by, knows what she's doing. Oh, she time, sure did. Yeah. All right, let's look at the next one. Mike. All right, that's Mike, and we've we've known Mike for for quite a long time, oh, yeah. probably probably going on 20 years. But the shoemaker? He, what? Yes. Oh, yeah. It he was calls his himself. dad's it was his dad's business originally, and he's located over on the east side of uh, Bridgeport. Is still making shoes? Walk, He's, he, he doesn't so much make repairs, them, but he remakes. He remakes, remakes shoes and uh, unbelievable sold. leather leather work. Yeah. That's a dying art. Oh, totally there is. There might be yeah, one or two yeah, left in the state yeah. of Connecticut. Mike, Mike is definitely Mike one. Is one of them. And the, the tools and the machines that he, have, he has are remarkable. Yeah, and, they don't exist. They're instant. close to no. 80 years yeah. old. Yes. Yeah. He, he does remarkable work on the machines. Basketball player, coach? Mm. It's uh, John. Uh, Bagley? Everybody knows, everybody in Bridgeport knows John Bagley. But uh, John grew up in Bridgeport, went to uh, Harding High School, played basketball very well at Harding High School, went on to play basketball very well at Boston College, and went on to play very well in the NBA for a few different teams. Retired, I think his last team, team was the, the Celtics. But he, uh, he ended up back at Harding High School. He coaches basketball now for Harding, so it's a neat. It's come full circle. Really yes. neat circle. Yes, isn't that it great? so great. Yeah. Arbor. Vincent. And Vincent, what's his story? Vincent was part of our Main Street series right. of portraits. and. Uh, How long has he had the barbershop? 
He, it was actually his yeah, dad. His dad. So he grew barbershop. up. He grew up. He grew up upstairs from the barber shop. I love so that. So that's yes. that old time you imagine story. Imagine all the pictures they've got. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. I am beautiful. Shana, Shana is a poet. Mm -hmm. Lives in uh, the Reeds Arts. Reeds Art Space. Art Space in Bridgeport. It started quite a few years ago for artists to have a low rent place to to live right in downtown Bridgeport. And yeah. also a place to show a gallery space. Yeah. So she's also a painter as well. Yeah. Beautiful face. And that's her, we put her, oh, absolutely. And we put her poetry right in on her photograph. It's beautiful. You have to, oh, right? so, yeah. Who's this gentleman who's holding this is, picture? This is Lou Bogash Jr. And uh, you can see Lou Bogash Jr. is a seven-year-old standing in front of his father, Lou. And uh, we photographed Lou as part of a series of photographs that we did of two closed-up theaters on Bridgeport's Main Street, the Palace and Majestic That we're theaters. about to talk to, or talk about. Yeah. This gentleman? Jorge is a... From Puerto Rico. Trying to, mm -hmm. From Puerto Rico. And, uh, you know, I would say maybe, you know, I, I see the term community activist. I'm not loves happy as used in that term. Loves, he loves where he's from. Loves where he's from, yeah. but he's also very involved in the Bridgeport, Bridgeport community. And the next one, I think, is the theater. Yes. All right, so this project, is it over? Is it done? You're still doing it? We have one little piece that's hanging. We'd like to be able to go back into the theaters and interview a theater historian, uh -huh. a local theater historian that we just haven't gotten around to doing yet. But uh, we produced a book a couple years ago with photographs from the what from the theater. What a gorgeous place. There's two it's theaters side remarkable. by side. Yeah. Sylvester Poline. And they're both presence. shuttered, are they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Since right. the 70s. So back to the table now. Um, you, you have all these photographs. They're going to go into a book. I see them on a mural somewhere. Is, is there a place they're going to go in the state of Connecticut, in the city of Bridgeport? You know, we're, we're, we're currently talking to a couple of different places about having a, having that first exhibit. We've, we've been talking to people at Harding High School who are very, you know, excited about having an exhibit of the Bridgeport Portrait Project mm -hmm. photos at Harding. You know, they've, there's probably close to a dozen students and staff that we photograph that are part of that Bridgeport Portrait Project. Because you could continue this for the rest of your life. Oh, we could. I mean, mm -hmm. easily. It could, it could, it's an um. easily ongoing thing. <laughs> we, we've recently been talking about how to actually hand it off to someone, whether it's in an educational institution or a historical right. society, but how to you know, get a fresh set of eyes and a fresh set of personalities to carry it on. You're carry still on. looking for yeah. more folks. How do they get a hold of you if they want to be a part of this project? We, we work out of our home. Our home phone number is 203-268. 8306. You just gave out your home phone number. I love that. I did. Is that okay? Or? Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> fine. Yeah. So you just, you want people to come to you or go to your website? Yes. And, okay. and find you there. Mm -hmm. um, and how has this so far changed you as you continue to do people's pictures and hear their changed stories? Changed us? We uh, are who we are. It changed us? I don't know. I don't add, mean, I, I think the it, depth that you're... I think it adds in. to you every day. I think, I, think you, I think you probably very well understand. Each yeah. time you meet somebody and talk to someone, you just learn a little bit of something And it gets different. filed away. It gets filed away, but it becomes part of you. Yeah, you know, it, it does. You know, people it talk does. about giving their little piece of their soul away when you take a photograph of somebody, but many people have given us that little piece. Well, I appreciate you so much for coming on and telling us about your project, and I hope it lives on forever, because <laughs> there's so many stories to tell. We do, too. Thank you so much. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate Thank you very much. You bet. Spend all night kissing and it wanders right here Then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find us a wish And it's the keys of the door But it's also a metaphor Need to keep going to the grocery store But mine, just to save time Skip right ahead to the last ride